Africans to a time when the emperor first became a symbol of his country and of all Africa. Only a veteran can now remember when the last and most brutal chapter of the European scramble for Africa began. 1935, Italy claimed Ethiopia and Mussolini's troops invaded. At the League of Nations in Geneva, the Emperor went to plead Ethiopia's just cause. The League, fearful of a shadow which would turn into the Second World War, did nothing. Shamefully, the great powers left Ethiopia to Mussolini and the Emperor to lonely exile in England. His Majesty, the Negus I call upon the first delegate of Ethiopia. Nowhere, I think, was the Emperor's tragedy felt more deeply than among the black people of the West, the slave descendants in North America and the Caribbean. Black consciousness had dawned in Jazz Age Harlem, and Africa fermented in the exiles' hearts. Many supported a black activist called Marcus Garvey, and when he demanded Africa for the Africans and repatriation to the homeland, they saw Ethiopia as a special symbol of the whole continent. Until now, it alone had not been seized by white Europeans. Such people volunteered to fight for Haile Selassie, although only a handful managed to go, or they organized to send relief. Black Americans rallied towards the cause, and black Jamaicans likewise, and so the organization was formed in New York, 105th one Lenox Avenue, New York, and as uh, Ethiopian War Federation Corporation. Those people gave up money, medicine, clothes, and what have you, sent in to Halicylazid. A branch of the Ethiopian World Federation soon opened in Jamaica, where Garvey came from. But in this neglected corner of the British Empire, black frustration had a new twist. A few ex-followers of Garvey had begun to mix Haile Selassie, symbol of Africa, with biblical notions of a messiah. By abbreviating Jehovah, or Yahweh, to Jah, and adding this to the emperor's earlier name, Rastafari, they created the invocation Jah Rastafari, a black messiah for their redemption. It would be years before any followers of the Rastafarian faith reached Ethiopia. The emperor knew nothing about them, as he himself returned, with British military help, to reclaim his throne. Look what Mussolini is trying to do. Take a bigger mouthful than any man can do. The drums are beating and the bugle call. But we cannot let the lion of Judah fall. So let us take a run in our hand and defend the Ethiopian war. Declare. 